Ready, go. Yes, we must. 
The, the federal government works for us, and, and people talk about secession. The states are fed up with them. We don't need to secede. They just need to straighten out. Barack Obama has as much care for the Constitution as Al Capone had for Prohibition. We want to use, and I said this at the last round, but we want to make sure that we use the 10th Amendment, the 9th and 10th Amendment, to protect our people. Because the federal government is out of control. Yes. Yes, sir. We want to use the 10th Amendment to protect the Bill of Rights. Yes. But if we have to, we will use the Second Amendment to protect them. We want to be a peaceful people, but we can't sacrifice liberty for peace. And it's got to come to the point. I mean, this is a Friday. It's, it's chilly out here. We've got we've got to have the crowds here, but you got everybody's got an email list. And, and I, I I've talked to plenty of soldiers, and these soldiers don't much like what's going on with Obama. I mean, these are our troops. These are our family members. And I just don't think he'll have federal troops coming down here to South Carolina. I just don't see that happening. So what we've got to do, with, like any other bullies, we've got to punch him in the nose. And how you punch him in the nose is something we're not going to do it. The man has never had a challenge. Everything's been handed to him. We don't know how his education was paid for, but it looks like it was handed to him, but we can't find out. He's never had to fight for anything. We have elected people to go up to D.C. and roll over. Now, we've got some congressmen up there, some congressmen up there that are standing firm, but we're in a fight. We're in an absolute fight. And this is a guy where there is no common ground. And our guys up in Washington that keep searching for common ground and compromise is going to lead to nothing but failure and loss of liberty. We need to vote them out, primary them out, and we need our state officials to stand up. Yes. We could not even get the nullification of the NDAA bill where they can come out and lock up American citizens without due process. We can't even get that out of the Judiciary Committee. Yes. We have a senator from Orangeburg that threatened them with a minority report. Yes. I mean, you think about that. I mean, we can't even get it out of the Judiciary Committee. And the rest of these folks that I serve with, a lot of Republican colleagues, they think we're all crazy. Yeah. I mean, we're, they were making comments about the black helicopter crowd and about all these folks that believe in all these conspiracies. And I told the senator from Orangeburg, I said, well, let me tell you this. When they come for you, you're going to want those crowds to fit in your rights just like they're trying to fit theirs. Yeah. These same people that the mainstream media love to scoff at are the first ones in line to go out and defend these liberties abroad. But yet we're, getting, we're losing them here. Yes. We're losing our liberties here. We have got enough natural resources. If we'll just get our own, we don't need to be involved in all these other conflicts. Yeah. We've got a big enough conflict here. Yeah. And we are under assault here like never before. That's right. And it's up to what y'all do. Because, you know, one politician with a microphone can't do much at all. I mean, all we can do is yell from the mountaintops. But if you guys get involved, get engaged, I mean, I, we had a gun show in Columbia. We had a rally here and had a great turnout, but there was still a gun show in Columbia, and it was packed. Yeah. Thousands of people were there. Also in Greenville. Also in Greenville. Yeah, they, they were packed there. I mean, you can't even get inside. The American people know what's going on. Yeah. And I'm sick and tired of it with you. So let's make our stand. Let's tell them we're not going to put up with it anymore. We need to wake up the people that are still sleeping. Yes, sir. Because we've got a country to say, and we don't want to be the generation that lost it for our children and our grandchildren. And, and I, want to, I want to leave it with one thing about the debt and what's going on right now. We have taxation without representation. Because we've got people that are not yet born that are going to be straddled with the debt that these folks up in Washington are putting on right now. The chains of debt are going to be on their back if we don't make a stand. So there may be some tough times. There may be some federal programs that might be cut. But I'd rather have federal programs cut than my liberty taken away. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, yes. Well, I, I tell you what, they, they come down here and basically have all the mandates. I talked with a guy in the hospital and he was telling me, he said, I don't even know if Medicaid's a positive thing. He said, because of the constraints and what they put on it, we might have just funded ourselves. Yes. Yes. I mean,
But anything the government gets involved in, they don't. They, it's just it's prime for waste and abuse. I, I say give the private sector. You know, I ask people when I go around and speak around the state. I said, I'm only uh, 43 years old, so we, we've had Medicaid my entire life. But the question I've always had is, what did you guys do with the bodies? And everybody gets that blank stare on their face. And that's why obviously you had to borrow or something because nobody can survive without federal government health care. And, and how did people learn to read? Because we didn't have a Department of Education prior to 1980. And, and how on earth, how on earth did we were able to breathe air and drink water before Nixon and, and the EPA? So, I mean, enough's enough to draw a line in the sand and say no more. Not only are you not going to take more of our freedom, but we're going to take some of it back. Thank you.